I mean, a man said to me, bought his wife. He said, my wife is hearing voices. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> I ain't going to do nothing about it. What's she going to do about it? Right. I was holding a meeting in the state of Oregon in the year of 1956. <laughs> and I started the meeting off. And so I just have a healing service, lay hands on people twice a week. And so this man brought his wife up in the line. I didn't know him because I'm a stranger. I know the pastor. He came from Oklahoma. My wife and I stand in the parsonage with him. So when I got to this lady, you could tell by looking at her, her mind's not right. Her eyes don't look right. And so, and her husband's along with her, holding her by the arm. When they, I took them one by one, talked to them, find out what's wrong with them. So when they got up to me, I said, well, uh, what did you come for? He did all the talk. He said she came for healing. He said, she's been two years over in the state institution. We used to call them insane asylums. And that sounds nicer to say state institution, you know. She's been there two years, and uh, so they dismissed her and let her come home. She's been home about six months, but she's getting back. Well, in fact, he said they're going to take her back again. So I want you to pray for her. Well, I laid hands on her and started to pray, and when it did, I had a revelation. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. And so I said to the pastor, he's standing right beside me, can we use your office or pastor study? And the pastor spoke up and said, yes, said, this man's a deacon here in our church. I said, well, you take your wife there, and I'll come there when, when I get through here and talk to you. Head with the healing line and finished it. And then I said to the pastor, you come and go with me. And he told me this is the deacon. His wife used to be a Sunday school teacher here before she lost her mind. You say a, a born-again, spirit-filled Sunday school teacher can lose their mind, go to this asylum? Well, emphatically, yes, she had, hadn't she? So we got in there and we sat down and I said to him and to her, she's sitting there, I said, now, I'll tell you why. I didn't want to talk out there in front. Uh, you, you, you can't say a lot of things. You shouldn't say. And anybody that does say a lot of things out in front about people, concerning people in, 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 in a crowd, when a lot of folks are there, uh, they're nuts. They're stupid. Some things need to be dealt with privately. Are you listening to me? I said, are you listening to me? Holy Ghost is not going to embarrass anybody. He won't embarrass you. So I said, now the reason that I did minister to her is because when I touched her, I, I knew all about the case. You hadn't told me anything except she'd been two years in this island. I said, now let me tell you. If I miss it, you speak up and tell me you missed it. I said, now, this woman, Brother Oral Roberts, was holding a meeting over here at Portland, and y'all went over there to a meeting, and she heard him say that God spoke to him in Enid, Oklahoma, 1947, in an audible voice. But remember, he wasn't seeking an audible voice. If God wanted to speak that way, he could. Several times he's spoken to me that way. I suppose, I was by myself, I guess it's audible, it sounded that way to me. But I said, then she began to seek voices. It's unscriptural to seek voices because you've departed from the word of God and the, and the devil will accommodate. So she began to hear these voices and they drove her crazy. You took her to Robert's meetings and he didn't deliver, so you're mad at him. He, I said, you took her to Brother Branham's meeting and Brother Branham didn't deliver her and you got mad at him. And if I endeavored to minister to him, I couldn't deliver her. And then you'd be mad at me. Because I said, you see, she's got enough intelligence. She knows exactly what I'm saying. And then I looked at her and I said, you understand everything I'm saying, don't you? She said, sure I do. Yeah, I understand everything you were saying. I said, you see, as long as you want to hear those voices, you're going to hear them. But now if you don't want to hear them, I can help you. See, you can't get people delivered that don't want to be delivered. Anymore you can get people saved that don't want to be saved. Amen? Amen? And you can't get people healed that don't want to be healed. Are you listening to me? As long as you want it that way, it's going to be that way. And she just spoke up and said, well, I want it that way. I said, I knew you wanted it that way. That's the reason I didn't minister to the case. Because it's going to stay that way as long as you want it that way. But now if you don't want to be free, you just let me know and we'll be able to help you. See, we can exercise authority. Amen, over the devil and demons. But you have something to do. And you need to take your place.